Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 25 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Sharp, aka Mr. B Sharp on the ones and twos and the threes and the fours and the fives and the six. Got a couple of the guys missing tonight, but you already know we still got some players in the house. Look at them, man. We might well just go on here and consider Tez one of the guys, man. He already been one of the guys in my book anyway. But my guy Tez back on the show, man. Appreciate it, man. Much love. Then you already know Mr. Controversy himself, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. H-Town himself with the the Falcons hat on, ladies and gentlemen. With the Falcons, I wanted to I wanted to point that out why he do. I knew he was gonna do, gonna put horns up and everything, but nah, it's all good. That ain't that ain't his rival, so it's all good. We can live with it. I, I've been getting him a hard time, but if it's ever a day, y'all see this man. He's y'all already know he's a Texan, not a Texan. Yeah, a Texans fan too, but if uh, Texas Longhorn fan. If y'all ever see him with an Oklahoma hat on, y'all already know to get that boy to be. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, no, nah, never that, man. Yeah. yeah, I hope not, man. Never that, we never gonna, that. We're we 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 gonna talk. Oh, you know. We're we, we gonna talk bad about you now. <laughs> but uh, y'all already know, get this thing started. And we're going to start it off with NBA All-Star Weekend Recap. And ladies and gentlemen, one of my biggest fears happened, unfortunately, about this whole weekend. The closest thing I watched about this whole, the closest thing I watched during this whole All-Star Weekend is um, Celebrity Game. You know how sad that is? I love the celebrity game, by the way. <laughs> so I just like to always see who uh gonna go off on NBA play, not NBA player, NFL players or whatever star. You get to see J. Cole, Kevin Hart, those type guys. You see these guys like really hoop like that, man. Some of them be balling. Man, I know TO is personal favorite. Uh balled out. DK went off last year. I didn't even know Michael Parson and uh CJ Stroud was going off the way they were doing that. It was nice now. They were like, shoot, it's been cool. But, I mean, outside of that, dog, the whole All-Star weekend, unless the parties were jumping, which I know they were, but, like, the events and all that, including the uh, main event game on Sunday night, boo, boo. From what I am hearing and from what I was seeing from the highlights, I was like, Bruh, what is this? The closest thing that was probably exciting was probably um uh Steph Curry and uh I always get uh her name wrong every time. What's her name? Sabrina uh UNESCO, I think is yeah, UNESCO yeah. is how you pronounce yeah. it. I think that was that was probably the most exciting thing. And that's saying a lot about NBA All Star Weekend. So, man, what's y'all thoughts about this? Because I'm just just not a fan, and I'm, uh, I'm so it was just just garbage, man. It's straight garbage. <laughs> Go ahead, man. My you know it's an issue when uh, when a celebrity game, them boys balling harder than the actual athletes, man, and the actual pros, man. Uh, I thought that it was going to be exciting to actually see it go back to East versus West, but, bro, oh, my God. I, and, you know, the worst part about it, I actually really, really thought that the West was going to come out and show out. Like, if you look at the teams compared to one another, the West had, like, a crazy squad, bro. But I should have known. When Jokic was starting, should have just known, bro. They all was going to play like Jokic, bro. 
They was all gonna hoop like Jokic, man. Like Jokic don't Jokic barely care about the NBA. So what you think he gonna do in an All Star game? You know what I'm saying? Like it just was terrible, terrible to play a basketball, man. Horrible to watch. I tried to give it a few quarters, man. Nobody was playing hard. This was the highest scoring All Star game ever. Two hundred and eleven points were scored, I think. So 185 or 86. It was just horrible to play a basketball, bro. Like, we could have went out there and put 50 points apiece. You know what I'm saying? Literally, nobody was playing no type of defense. Uh, I don't even think LeBron played the whole game or anything like that, uh, which, I mean, it's an all-star game. Nobody's going to play the whole game. But he didn't even play a lot, man. It's, and it's funny. I seen uh, a post. Somebody was like, would you rather go to the all-star game or to the Super Bowl? Come on, dude. What, really? Come on, Is man. It, was that a real question? Even a question? Would, would you rather go see? I'd rather see a high school McDonald's game than watch the All-Star game, man. Like, these guys are not hooping, bro. They, they should just get – if these guys are so scared of uh, getting hurt or whatever, like, they just need to cut the whole All-Star game at this point, bro. It's, it's, it's the worst display of basketball I've ever seen in my life, man. Uh, it's, 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 it's nothing exciting about watching these guys go out there and not play defense and just shoot around. It's just a shoot around. It's a glorified shoot around at this point, bro. So I'm, I'm you, done with it. You know until what's so great? My fault. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, until it gets more competitive, I'm done with the Austin awesome game, bro. I, I yeah. watch everything but that. Yeah. And the crazy thing that you said that now, like – I, I literally said this last week, though. That was just making it so crazy. I'm so glad you brought up the injury. I'm like, bro, I have really never seen nobody get hurt in the All Star game. Like, bro, just play basketball. If you plan not to get hurt, guess what? You're going to get hurt. That's every time I've seen somebody get hurt, is when they plan not to get hurt. Like, what are you worried about, brother? Like, they spent all this money. They the, re- the fans are the reason you guys are getting paid this much, dog. It's not making any sense to That's me true. why y'all playing like this. They coming out to see y'all, and I see why Adam Silver, even though I give him a hard time, made it 65 games for y'all to make these all-NBA teams and all that because if you're making these all-NBA teams, guess what? You get you qualify for Matt's money. And I ain't trying to give Matt's money to nobody that ain't going to be there. 65 games, bro. You know how sad that is. We got a force guy to play 65 games. Like, bro, you're just playing basketball. Just basketball. That is it. <laughs> I ain't trying to minimize y'all job, but, bro, it's a lot harder jobs in this world than just playing basketball. Something that you're absolutely It's a kid's getting. game. It's a kid's game. And you're getting paid millions to do it. So I don't, I don't, I don't even want to hear no excuses when it comes. To like anything that these dudes complain about, like if I even see one dude complain about it, it's pretty much shut up. We seen the All Star game. We seen how y'all playing. I like, bro, shut up. Just play ball now. Like I don't even care. My fault, Ted. I just had to get in on when he uh said something about the injury. Oh no, it's all good, man. Um, so All Star weekend, I will. I, I, I say, like I was, I was saying off camera, is uh, I watched maybe up until like the third quarter of the All Star game, then I had to turn it off. Like I just couldn't do it. Uh, but from the weekend, I will say I watched the uh, the celebrity game. Um, that was actually entertaining. Like you said, I didn't know that Michael Parsons had a game like that. Uh, I kind of figured CJ Shroud could hoop. I don't know, he just gives Hooper. Um, so that was impressive. Uh, Nakua, Puka Nakua, man, he probably could have won the dunk contest, to be honest with you, man. He was, man, that kid can fly. Uh, outside of that, um, I watched the, the skills competition. That was kind of entertaining, actually, uh. Tyler Halliburton and his squad won, of course, um, just because, you know, he's he's, he's very skilled. And uh, I think they did the Pacers versus – it was the Pacers versus the All-Stars. 
uh, versus the round pick. And uh, Pacers won, I think. Yeah, and um, so that was entertaining. One of the more entertaining parts that I saw at the All-Star game was actually, I don't know if you guys watched this, but it was the um, the Rising Stars Challenge. Um, it was actually good basketball. <clears throat> and it's usually good basketball because you get those kids in there that are young, and you know, they just want to play. Um, but the format I thought was dope. And I was a big supporter of them moving back to the East format for East West format for the all-star game. But after I saw the format for the rising stars challenge this year, I was like, maybe they should give that a try in the all-star game because it was, um, it was basically they had 10 teams, 10 players on each side. So 10 East players. Well, in this case, it was 10 sophomores, 10 rookies, and they divided them into two teams of five. And they played a tournament to 40. Mm-hmm. So they had one round to 40. And then the next two, they played in the championship to 40. And it was entertaining, man, because, you know, there's no subs. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking, like, man, if you get that in an all-star game, you can get some really amazing five teams, uh, five-man teams out there. Uh, and maybe that'll breed some competitive basketball in that all-star game. Um but yeah, that was entertaining. Of course, the dunk contest. Well, I'll go to the three point contest first. Three point contest was, I on the previous podcast I said that th- I thought it would be a bunch of big men, it'd be boring, uh, but it was actually entertaining too. Uh, they put up around the same numbers, like twenty six. An interesting fact that I wa- that I watched was, Lori Marketing made the most threes out of anybody. Uh, I don't know if anybody noticed that he made the most threes in his round out of anybody. Uh, I think that's Steph included. He uh, he put his money ball rack as the second rack. He made like two out of the money ball rack. And then in the last two wrecks, he went he went like nine for 10. So if he had to put the money ball rack at the end, he just scored like 30 points in the first round. But he ended up scoring like 25 minutes in the clip. Um, that was entertaining. The Sabrina and Steph, that was that was entertaining as well. I kind of I expected Sabrina to put up more points than that. And I don't know if you put up with what the record is like 37, 38. I thought both I thought both people would be in the 30s, but apparently it just wasn't a shooting night for the uh three point contest because nobody was in the 30s. <laughs> uh, then uh the dunk contest was oh my god. It was just trash, bro. It, boo, was, boo. it was trash from like. Hey, Matt, Matt did it still. Yeah, I mean, he yeah, did. Matt, but yeah, he was about the only like, entertaining one. So, yeah, so about that, he did a dunk at the beginning. His first dunk was probably one of my top five dunks I've ever seen in the dunk contest. This man jumped over a man, got the ball, threw it to himself, and then then reversed it. It was, they gave him like a 46 for that. And I think once that happened, it, the dunkers, I, I know Matt McClung, because you got to understand the culture he comes from. He comes from a culture of, of dunkers. Like, you know, these mm-hmm. new kids, they they make up some really creative stuff and they can jump and they, they're very, very talented. But once they gave him that 46, I feel like he dialed it back. I feel like he he was just like all I got to do is make dunks to win. I don't have to do all this extravagant stuff. Mm-hmm. And then to see them go and give Jalen Brown like a fifty <laughs> for absolutely nothing. It was like it was like, do y'all just not want Matt McClellan to win this thing? I this thought dude that jumped was over. <laughs> this dude jumped over Casimir in a chair. They gave him like a forty nine for yeah. that. I was like, He's come out in on. The chair. Man. Yeah, it was so whack. It was so whack, man. I think like, they was just hating up against McClellan because he in the G League or something. I don't know. But the great run, what make it so wild up? Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, the Rising Stars thing. That was about the only thing, too, yeah, because I did enjoy watching that, too. So I like I the forgot, format. I, for, I, forgot, I thought I, forgot. I would hate the format, but I loved it. Yeah, but the, i tell you what I disagree with you on with the All-Star. But man, I was like, bro, when I seen that, 
uh, highlight for the Jalen Brown thing. Like I was, I wasn't watching it, but I could see like everybody reaction on Twitter and Facebook. They're like, "Bro, I know you lying." And I was like, <laughs> "Bro, the judge it must be awful right now." And these are like dunkers. I'm like, "Who is giving these terrible grades right now, dog?" Like these That's grades me. are awful. They had Gary yeah. Payton. He's not a dunker. Yeah, but they had they had Fred Jones, who was a uh, slam. Yeah, Fred Jones, I think with Dr. J. No, oh somebody, else. I can't remember. They had they had I forgot his name, but he won the very first dunk contest. Yeah. Now you can classify him as a dunker, but he probably won it with a simple reverse dunk back then. Like you got to think. Wait, man, we gotta think about the times now. Now everything gonna get more and more creative with time. That's but, true. So, man, I, I, I'm just like, I'm just the whole thing. I, I don't even know what to say about dunk contest. But I'll tell you what. What I disagree with you on the All Star tip, like, bro, I'm gonna say it over and over and over again. David Stern had the NBA like a well or machine. You knew the only thing that is still the same since uh, his passing is basically um, Carl, Kenny, Chuck, and Shaq. <laughs> that is still the same, but that ain't got nothing to do with him. I'm just saying that is still the same. But everything else like pretty much changed. I'm like, Stuff that you didn't even need to change, which I and I just thought of something about that that Adam Silver, Adam Silver did that I absolutely hate. But I don't I don't I don't really too much like the uh split up for the All Star game because the All Star game it's already was dope what for what it was. It was just like bro, right. you don't need to change it. It's just like bro, can y'all get back to playing basketball? But I. Right. And they were like, oh, you just need to pay him. I said, okay, I know what they need to do. And I think it would definitely help. Whoever win this game going to get home court advantage in the NBA Finals. I don't care if you win 82-0, but if your team lost, you're not going to get home court advantage in the NBA Finals. Let's change that up real, real quick. And I'm like, bro, I don't want to hear them saying they get them more money. Like, bro, you're making enough, but nah, let me rewind. <laughs> right. let, me re- let me rewind. Too much money and enough money. So I ain't going to even go there and say they making enough money. I'm sorry for making that mistake. I would never say that by nobody. But I ain't paying you nothing. It's the All-Star game. It's, it's an honor to be here. And he do acting like, they're like oh, man, I'm just going to just half-ass it and I'm going to go home. That's it. Like, no, dog. <laughs> You didn't have ass to get here. Don't don't have ass when I pay, spent this money to come see you play. And all these stuff, like, no, bro. But yeah, I think it's yeah. like he he uh I know Adam Silver, he changed the format because they weren't playing. Like they, they had started this whole thing of scoring all these points had started before yeah. he changed the format. And that the format was an attempt to get the guys to play i think it's just like the new nba man like these it's kind of like i remember when Giannis said that he don't work out with nobody because like they all competition and like i think back in the day you had more of that than you have now like a lot of these guys just like friends they're going on vacations together and all kind of stuff man so when it comes to an all-star game mm -hmm. it's just for some reason they just they taking it like a break now. It is called All Star Break. It's, it's, it's like they taking the weekend off, bro. And it's just not. It's not entertaining for the fans at all. I'd be mad if I paid money to see that. No, that, and see, that's what I'm saying, bro. Folks spending their money to come to this, and that's what I'm like, bro. The older guys get it, bro. You got to keep pushing the game, like, bro. We we made it this way for you guys to get money. Now, what you guys got to do is keep pushing it for. So the next generation can get more money and keep pushing the game and keep raising the game and doing all that. Bro, Kobe is rolling over in his grave seeing the way these guys play. And I ain't going to say guys weren't friends because, like, Michael Jordan was friends with Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing and all that. Like, we friends over here. But on that court, you're an enemy. 
You're an enemy. I'm looking at you as an enemy. I'm coming at you. See, they weren't trying to play together, though. And that's what these that cats that these days trying to play, get all on the same team. And a, a regular it. season game, depending on which two teams playing, looks like an all star game. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, bro, a lot of folks don't want to. They, they like to say the Celtics with uh, Paul Pierce and all that. You know, and them starting that. But I'm like, they traded to go get these guys. Even though somebody say, oh, I want to go play for them. Don't be the team going to trade them there. What really changed it was dudes hit that free agency and they can be like, I'm going to go down there. Like what LeBron did to join the Heat. That changed the whole league forever. And that's why I'd be like, in a lot of ways, I'm like, it would have been kind of different if them guys came to you. But you like left Cleveland to go to Miami. And then how you played in the 2011 finals, still can't get over that. Because I'm like, bro, there's no way in the history of the NBA, I have never seen it. A star that caliber letting a role player outscore him in the finals. It doesn't matter if you lose. It's just the way you just let this man outplay you. This man, I think, was one JJ, but it was not JJ Barrett, but uh, Jason Terry outscoring him. But it, it, it's been like downhill basketball for a long time, bro. The game is just not the same, bro. It's just not the same. No, no, it's not. It's not the same game I watched. Watched uh, Michael Jordan hit supposedly the game winning shot, and then Kobe come back down and take that moment from him. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> yes. And I was about to say, bro, that would have been a great sitting off an all side game, but Kobe took that away from. Him. Yeah, he just snatched that away from. Him. And I, I, I ain't but it gonna was lie like to. the passing of the torch, though. It was kind of like once he did that, it was like, oh, all right, it's, it's this guy's league now. Hmm. The thing that I always uh, I've, bro, I always been a West guy for some odd reason. I don't know, like all my guys just so happen to be in the West. I always been a West guy. So, and I know somebody questioned me on that, but you from um, uh, well, technically the South is on the East, depending on where you at or whatnot. Well, yeah, for the most part, as far as Texas go, that's about the close to the South you gonna get, but. Yeah, mostly the South is on the East. You're like, man, why you ain't on these? I don't know. I just all my guys always play for the win. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I just I just hate how the NBA is now, man. And then the last thing before we get all this, uh, we pretty much signed up the All Star Weekend. The one thing that I absolutely hate that Adam Silver uh recently just changed the NBA draft is only two rounds. Why are we making it two nights? Two nights? Yeah, that's true. that's true. Who's going to watch the second round? I'm telling you, bro, everything I have complained about, this man has changed. Literally everything I have complained about, he has changed eventually. Like, I thought, I'm, I'm going to at least give him a little slack. I thought it was kind of a good idea when they uh, put a little fantasy draft. Like, okay, we're going to have one guy lead, another guy lead, and then they can pick their team. I thought that was cool at first, but let's get back to the East West thing. But this whole two nights for the NBA draft, bro, Trash. nobody's watching the second round. And more than likely, bro, nobody's watching after the top 15 picks. If that majority of your viewers. So. NBA draft if, 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 I guarantee you this is going to be a one and done thing this year because nobody's going to watch it. I absolutely think it's a dumb idea. Adam Silver is too smart to be. Uh, Adam Silver. Everybody's going to be waiting for the Bronny son. <laughs> bro, I'm, I, bro, if anybody does that, bro, see the thing when you keep mentioning that. I don't like I'm not mad that you're saying that because it's gonna be somebody stupid enough to do that. But once they do that, they're going to lose their job. 
Because, bro, he is not ready. He's not, <laughs> no, not at all. He's not ready. No, at all. No, no. See, He's I don't like. Ready. I don't disagree with you saying it. I just, just the only thing I'm saying, bro, is that somebody's gonna lose their job, and it's going to happen. It's pretty much. I don't even want to put him in a Mitch Trubisky type situation. It's just like, bro, what are you doing? And <laughs> and don't let it be no. Don't let it be no first round pick. I don't care if it's the last pick in the first round. You do that, bro. The time, the clock is ticking on you. He's not going to start. And what you saying? He's just like, oh, he's just a defensive player. Come on, bro, stop it. And they they Ronnie, banking on Ronnie, the, not, Ronnie ain't even on Marcus Jordan level. That's true. Marcus, Marcus, Marcus Jordan is nowhere near. near. Marcus. Not nowhere near. No, he was at, I think uh, UCF. Been, UCF. UCF. I meant. I don't know why I UCF. said that, but. Uh, I think they're just banking on it coming with LeBron, man. I think they just bro. Bank, even if even if that, bro. Le- but but that's the thing, bro. LeBron is not about to be in the lead forever. He's that's going true. to go home <laughs> like Brady. He's going to go home like everybody else. And now you're going to be stuck with his son. You're going to lose your job. You're going to you lose your job. You still jerseys that year. Hey man, please. Congratulations. It's gonna be like a little story for like you can you can celebrate that for the first month. After that, bro, nobody's gonna care that much. Maybe like on Christmas, like oh, the father and son are playing together on Christmas. Outside of that, bro, that is just you're you're messing up your team for the long run, dog. Don't mess up your team. And don't mess matter of fact, don't mess up my team. You see what this is? She's Shaq and Kobe, man. Shaq and Kobe. I'm a real Lakers <laughs> fan, man. And I see I'm these. Gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you who's gonna be the who's gonna be the hot one though, Bryce, man. See, Bryce, Bryce gonna be the one, bro. He's see, gonna be now. The now one. we're talking. He's gonna yeah. be the one out of the brothers. He's the one, right? But not the size. Yeah. Before before we uh move on. The one thing, yeah, Bryce is definitely that one. Now we can have that conversation with Bryce, but Bryce, I don't think LeBron's gonna be in that league before Bryce get in there. I think he's gonna be gone by then. No. Okay. And even so, I wouldn't want to just draft Bryce to get LeBron because LeBron, is, that time is over, with, bro. His time That's is just coming to this man. Gonna try to do other things. He already doing uh, big things in LA. He's gonna continue to do big things. So True. I think he, like, what else can he accomplish at this point? But uh. I've been saying this. Quick. Huh? No, I was saying I got a question before we get off All-Star uh, weekend. about. Okay, All-Star let me say this, then you can go ahead. But uh, what uh, Master P son, Mercy Miller, is what they think uh, Bronny is. That's a Mercy joke. is like that. He is really <laughs> like that. And he didn't even make the All-American game. Mm-hmm. This man is averaging 30. I still say, and bro, I like, bro. I, I just wish Bronny played another sport for some reason. I don't know, man. I just, I just, I, I just, I, a lot of this is just unfair on his part because I didn't think he deserved to be a, a McDonald's All American. I feel like he, he can be a, a good NBA player, but I don't think he's going to be like, what folks want him to be, or what, man? I, I don't know, man. I'm just saying. I, only reason, only reason I say I wanted to play another sport just because of the history with great fathers. Like I'm talking about, like all time great fathers, and then where they sons land or whatnot. It's kind of hard to um, land on that, but that's just me speaking. Hopefully, he does great, but he's gonna be good regardless. But he's just not ready for the NBA right now. Go ahead, Tiz, and we're gonna true. move on. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, I just thought about this. I y'all had to forgive me because I can't remember exactly who said it, but I watched the interview during it was after the dunk contest. This is about the dunk contest. And the guy, this NBA player, he said that I just want to see what y'all thought about it. That they should take the players in the league with the top five verticals. And it should be mandatory that they be in a dunk contest. What do y'all think about that? I forgot who was it Kuzma? I can't remember who exactly said it, but they interviewed a player and he said, I think you should take the player. I don't know, because some of them knew may have got 
Bert, Bert, I don't know, man. They might have wax, yeah, it, wax dunk but, packages. You like, don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah, I think that that's how, you, that how do you fix it? Crap. How do you fix it though? Because nobody wants to lose to a G League player. Like that's the reason. Like you never, you're yeah. never gonna get one of those. It doesn't stars. matter if that G League is that dude. If he, if he just yeah. that dude, just that dude. I'm just thinking more fan vote. Fan vote. Fan that vote. Be, but I always think it should be mandatory. If you're an All Star. You should somehow participate in All Star Weekend in some type of form of fashion, just some way. Yeah. That's the only thing, like, bro, folks. We know who we came to see. A lot of these guys yeah. that won dunk contests, I couldn't tell you if I ever seen them again. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think what happened was like, I yeah, know they, like we got to move on. When you okay, yeah, back in the day when you had Jordan and Dominique and all them in the dunk contest, Look athleticism at meant. That, yeah, it meant so much. It's, it's like if you were an athlete in the league, then you were like one of the better players. By the Listen. time the LeBrons came around, you know, like it's a very good chance if LeBron went into that dunk contest, he would have lost to like Gerald Green or somebody like that. Because, but, okay. <laughs> but and I mean, nobody cares, but but him. Like you, you don't want to be. In the GOAT conversation, and you lose to a player who get playing eight minutes a game. And Bro, nobody's going to hold would never that. live that down. No, nobody, nobody's going to hold that to him being in. Like, bro, we want to see the stars. Just That's just true. see the stars there. That is it. Nobody's going to hold. I, I have but, never heard no GOAT conversation but, where he won a slam dunk competition. Nobody cares. But, but the stars aren't the best dunkers anymore is what I'm saying. Yeah, I they, agree They used with to you. be. I agree with you on that, but I'm saying stars should still participate. Nobody, That's oh, true. nobody wants to see Jalen Brown in the dunk contest. I guarantee no. you, folks, I knew Jalen Brown was going to At least not now, me. I don't. Now nah, so I would I, I knew I didn't want to see him then because I was like, bro, what is this? This is the best we can do? Bro. Come on, man. We could have put uh, Anthony Edwards in there. If Anthony Edwards lost, was- it is what it is, but I know he's going to get up, true. bro. And give us some all-time judges, man. Give us, give us Dominique. Go ask MJ to judge it. Get yeah. Vince Carter. He not doing nothing. He 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 commentating anyway. Get him to judge it. Well, get let some me, uh, in this. We definitely gonna have to move on. But yeah, you're right about that. Doc Rivers and JJ Reddick. I should have uh, put Pat Bev and all them in there, but. You know the uh, NBA season starting to heat up because the bowl over with, All Star Weekend over with, the second half of the season. You already know what time it is. It's a road to the playoffs and who's going to be in the finals and all that good stuff. And so we already know Doc Rivers took over for uh, uh, Adrian Griffin uh, as head coach of the Bucks mid season, and he's been starting off slow. But to Doc's credit, I would give him. Um, all the players haven't been there. Still, some of these games, I still don't believe they should have lost regardless. Just just a couple of games, I feel like they should not have lost. But J.J. Reddick is saying that uh, Doc is just making excuses, and he's tired of him making excuses for uh, the way his team is playing like he always made excuses. And then his son, Austin, was getting on um, JJ saying, "Well, he was taking uh, taking accountability for this, that, and that. Like everything that happened, they sure put the blame on Doc, and Doc had no reason but take it because it was on him. I, to be honest, I don't know if I ever heard Doc like shy away from uh, criticism or when I really put it on himself. But I could be missing some, but." I just think it's an interesting conversation. And Pat Bell was getting on JD like, your best seasons are with this guy. And Austin said the same thing. So I don't know, man. It's 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 kind of crazy. I I really believe Doc is a good coach. It just a lot of unfortunate uh bad losses in the playoffs. And I'm talking about it ain't you losing in the finals. You lose in the finals, you just lose in the finals, but it just 
certain series you were not supposed to lose <laughs> by a wide margin. You just lost. I'm talking about not just lost. You just blew it. <laughs> so what are y'all thoughts on this, man? Can uh, I think the bus going to recover, but what y'all feel about the situation? I mean, Doc said it himself. When they called him up, he asked him, why? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are y'all thinking? <laughs> like, for him to even tell them, like, what are y'all thinking? Like, what, what, what do y'all want me for? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, it's honestly, dude, I think Doc, man, I don't really think Doc was ready for this. Uh, he got all these superstars. I mean, I don't want to say all these superstars. He has a he has a superstar talented team with this Milwaukee Bucks squad. It's no reason why they should they should be going on this losing slump that they're going on since Doc has gotten there. Um, it's it's a weird situation over there in Milwaukee, man. I know Dame is like probably pissed off. You know what I'm saying? Because you know. He's looking at these Bucks teams like, hey man, we supposed to be going to go get a ring over here. Or we supposed to be some contenders in the East. And uh right now these guys are just stinking it up over there in Milwaukee. And I mean, I don't really know who to blame. It's hard to not look at Doc like, hey, you know, they were doing good right before you got here. Now what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, maybe Doc's not resonating in that locker room like he should, but it's it's kind of weird, man, seeing this team kind of fall on their faces right now. And we don't know just how worse it's gonna get. But hopefully it gets better before it gets worse. Cause uh I think we all want to see Milwaukee do good this year. Uh especially coming out of the East, man. There's not too many crazy teams over there, but they're not looking that good right now, man. And and we just gotta see what happens. I mean, prematurely uh uh firing their coach. You know what I'm saying? When the season wasn't even going that bad for them, just to bring in Doc and Doc is losing these games like this. Like it's just it's not a good look for look for uh, the Bucks, bro, all together. Yeah, uh this is a weird one, man. Uh one okay, I I'll just get this part out the way. Uh I like Doc Rivers. I do. I think Doc Rivers is a good coach. But I also think Doc Rivers is a tad bit overrated um, as a coach. Uh, simply for the same you. things that that you said, Brinsky. Like, I mean, yeah, he won when he, you know, he won with Boston. But then, like, he's lost some playoff series that it was just like, my God, how did you, how did you let this one go? Um, and I actually, I like JJ Reddick, man. Like, he's he's. I'm not gonna say one of my favorite players, but. Um, I think he's a good piece to a team. Um, this is a tough one, man, because like you said, uh, Doc Doc is like, hey, how did y'all get to my name? Like, why why do y'all call me? And uh, mm-hmm. it is a tough thing to take over a team in the middle of the year. And you're talking about a team that was winning. Um, so you come into a situation where the only, like, you don't really have anything to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's only you can only make your situation and uh worse, you know, coming in there because you know teams already winning. Uh it would have been like it would have been almost the equivalent to Steve Kerr taking over for uh Mark Jackson and then just running the team in the ground. All right. But well, of course we know that didn't happen. But um yeah, as far as the the back and forth with him and JJ and about him making excuses or, or whatever, I mean, the excuse that I just got here in the middle of the year is a legitimate one, JJ. Like I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what else you expect him to say. Um, now, if you want to point to him to say that you know his teams have underperformed in big games and in playoffs, then okay, you have a valid point, but. Uh, to say that he's making excuses for this is it's not really. I don't know if it's an excuse. It's kind of, kind of the truth, man. Like you know, you you bring in a coach. He probably got different coaching philosophies, mm-hmm. uh, different personnel he likes to play with. You know what I mean? So like, it, a yeah. lot of this is just not his guys. And, and it ain't like, you know, and he just got to gel with these guys, like. 
You yeah. it ain't like he had preseason or nothing like that or whatnot. Like he just jumped right into the fire. <laughs> right, right. I mean, the smart thing for me with the Bucks would be would have been to just promote somebody within. I mean, if you're gonna get rid of your coach who's a winning coach uh, in the that middle of the so season, mm -hmm. it it just seems like the smart thing to do is like find somebody that's already there that's doing what we do every day anyway. <laughs> that's already a part of this winning culture we've established this season, and let them take over. Uh, but to bring in somebody else, like I said, who's got a different philosophy and everything, and just I don't know, it didn't make any sense. And he's he's not a coach. He's not a coach I think of when I think of a coach that can come in and do something like that. Like if you had like, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of a coach that could come in mid season would be good at that. Like uh, Eric Sprostra or somebody like that, or uh, uh, maybe I want to say Phil Jackson, but he runs a different philosophy that's all to his own. So that would need time too. I don't know. It's just, it's just tough. It's, it's, it, it, he was in a tough situation to begin with. And, um, uh, so I don't know about all the excuses that they they're saying he's making. I I don't know. I I don't, I don't know if I buy into that one. I mean, maybe on past teams, but on this team, the excuse that he's giving is valid. This is as valid as they come, man. It's, it's this is not a player changing teams in the middle of a season. You know, where you're a shooter on one team and you go to another team and you're still a shooter. Nah, this is a mm -hmm. coach that's coming in off the couch. Oh, <laughs> um, that. that with they, a whole different philosophy for yeah, what they, they do. They try to make it sound so easy, though, but it's not easy. It's no. like, bro, I got to get these guys. All, I don't know, man. It, it, it's, it's a hard transition. He's just learning on the go. That I, with, I ain't going to say, he, like, uh, you don't know how to coach. or what, yeah, But you still got to jail with these guys. Like, oh, which guy is good in this moment? Or not because he don't know these guys yeah. like that. <laughs> like, oh, is he good in this situation? He good in that situation or whatnot with this guy on the court. That takes time, man. And you can see it happening with the veteran teams, like with Mike Malone and the Denver Nuggets. Mike Malone, they yeah. he like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do with this or whatnot. If, if somebody hot, they just hot. That's easy. But I'm just saying, yeah. like, okay, I'm throwing my death or whatnot, yada yada yada. But I didn't want to talk about that for a hot second, man. It was just it's it's gonna keep brewing, but I'll say the last thing on it before we move on. But Doc just has to if he can just win. It's certain series, he just gotta win, man. I ain't say you gotta win a championship. Yeah. It, a championship yeah. will help. A championship will help a whole lot. Doc get a championship. Now he has two. And he's on that rare list with coaches that have two championships. So if he come in mid-season and win a championship, that 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 will help his uh case, even though he was voted like one of the top 15 coaches of all time, which I had no problem with. But I can understand why some folks would, but I didn't have a problem with. But hey, just at least make it to the Eastern Conference Finals because you have the team. Dame helps a whole lot with uh takes a lot off Giannis because I think Chris yeah. Middleton is like a, um, he's a good third, fourth option. Dame is definitely good, can be your first and uh, second option. That's just whatever you, however him and Giannis play that night. I just don't think Middleton is that second option that you want because some, sometimes he be on, sometimes he be off, but we'll see. What, why do you think they went and got Doc Rivers though? What do you think they was thinking? Championship. Yeah, championship. But do you, to be honest, and do you to be, think they 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 had Doc Rivers in mind before they let their coach go? To be honest, it's just like how the, the Haven said what Doc said. I don't know what y'all guys doing. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, bro, I, I don't even know how to answer that, though. I really don't know how to answer that, bro. I'm like, I don't even know what you guys are even thinking. What made you even think of me? Why did you fire this guy mid-season? So it's a whole bunch of stuff we're not even talking about that led up to, to get Doc, bro. I just don't know. I really don't well, I, know. I, I'll, I'll say one of the, Go yeah, ahead. I'll say one of the things is uh, – oh, go ahead. 
Oh no! But uh, okay, I say I, I I say one of the things is like it was reported that uh, the previous coach didn't, you know, he had some arguments or whatever with the players. He didn't, you know, the environment wasn't good, and, and Doc Rivers is a big environment guy. Like you know, he he, he preaches culture and, and stuff in his locker room. So maybe they was looking at that. It's like, hey, our environment is going down the drain with this coach. So let's bring in somebody who we know. Uh, is going to bring a positive culture in the locker room, maybe. I don't I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to make up stuff. <laughs> hey, man, that, that, that why I would have touched on just a little bit. That was, hey, man, let, we're going to let it play out, man. We're going to see. But, hey, yeah, it's it getting started. Hey, we may be talking about something different about this situation next week, so we'll see. So, well, hey, man, hey, you just uh, mess with your computer, but – Good old Shay Shaw. My dog. Now, see, my dog, Shannon Shaw, been doing some awesome things this year, man. Been going off and all kicked off with that Cat Williams interview, legendary interview, that big brick truck that he said he had to give all that money he got from that. I'm like, hey, man, hey. Shout out. See, I love Shannon. We have uh, Monique on there. We're going to talk about her at uh, towards the end. But is Shannon Sharp being sensitive? Now, we all know Shannon Sharp been um, getting to some beef with some comedians. And uh, in a lot of ways, I, I can understand why they're coming at him. Because... I understand you just interviewing somebody and you can't control what's coming out of their mouth. But a lot of some of these questions kind of like you fishing for something, like you fishing for something. Because oh, during the Cat Williams interview, he said there would be no DL slander. I think he said something about DL, but he like, there won't be no DL slander. Like he's like he's a solid cat. Oh, and not. But Monique didn't think so in a lot of ways. But like I said, I'm going to get back to that. And then DL said he thought Wendy Williams went somewhere. Well, only thing changed is that she got a uh, a weight set. <laughs> like, bro, like, bro he, he, hey, man. I don't know why people don't think DL funny. DL is hilarious to me, bro. But, uh, oh, that's hilarious. Well, uh, then Mike Epps getting on Eddie Griffin, joking about him. When I, like pretty much a lot of comedians just on his head, bro. And like he's not taking it. I well, Corey Holcomb. But I know some of the guys like, bro, somebody call you gay. I can understand you coming at them. When I like you calling me gay, but like after the first person, bro, you're like, I don't know what too much you can do. Once you show that you are sensitive to uh some comedians, they're gonna be like, Oh, we got him. Get him, <laughs> go get him now. And so, uh, I just ain't like how he came at Mace because Mace didn't go at him. <laughs> he was just saying what anybody else was saying. Like, Mike, I'm just Mike else. I'm like, I'm glad you cleared that up because she ain't going to he, he whoop that ass now. <laughs> we ain't going to act like he's going to whoop that ass. Like, if, if he coming at me or he coming at you, you just basically going to have to shoot him or something. That's all he basically said. That's all, just making jokes, just talking about the situation, something like that. But he wasn't talking about Shannon. Then Shannon just took it a whole other way, calling his man a fake pastor and all that junk. Just like really just coming at him, like, like, bro, I wasn't even talking about you. And but he's saying now one one thing that we all have to agree on. If you haven't watched Cam and Mace, I I knew Cameron was funny. I knew Mace was funny, but I didn't know Mace was that funny. That man is hilarious, dog. That man is hilarious. It's some stuff I can't even say on here, bro. It's so, it's so hilarious, man. But uh, when that man said, the problem I had with it, he said, you didn't come at Cameron. And we was talking about the same thing. So you trying to say Cam tough? And I ain't. <laughs> 
He's still making a making it a light situation, bro. I just right. need, but I just want to know y'all thoughts on it, man. My fault for just uh, rambling on that. Uh, it, it was just just weird, bro. I I just feel like Shannon just need to chill out. What's y'all thought? Man, I think uh, I think man, Shannon taking a lot of stuff to the heart, man. There's a lot of guys is going at his character, and you know. He, he, Talking about how he's doing a lot of sassy stuff. I mean, some of this stuff is about to happen when you when you got a podcast generating the numbers that they're generating. Uh, I don't think Macy even said anything wrong, man. He just was giving the scenario to him, man. That's all it was. And Mace being Mace, man, Mace is hilarious, bro. I will back that. That, that dude is a funny guy. Him and Cam doing great things with their podcast, too. But it's just like, dude, like Shannon, man, gig. Get a little tougher, man, with this stuff, man. You ain't got to, you know, he's starting to show his sassy ways in a bit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like, dude, you 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 can't take it to the heart. If it's not, it's one thing to defend yourself, man, and defend your sexuality, but then it's another thing to be like, oh, I want to fight you. Wanna, now you're looking a little guilty, brother. You you looking like, you know, there's some truth to the, to the stuff. You don't want to get exposed and, I mean, I don't know, man. I think Shannon, bro, and it's a lot of these comedians are coming at his neck with that whole Shay Shay thing. And Eddie Griffin is so hilarious, dude. That's that stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I was like, oh my God, bro. They were just roasting this man. It's like, dude, like, if you know you're not gay and you know, like, you know who you really are as a person, you, you should be able to laugh about these things too, man. It, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't. Don't take it to heart. That's all I'm saying about Shay Shay. You don't need to take it to heart. Bro. If it ain't, please true. don't. Please don't. Good. No. Oh no, my, my fault, dude. I just keep jamming in. Man, but the funny thing, the funny thing that, bro, we all know this, dog. When folks, we ain't even got to use comedians. Let's just say friends are just joking, joking around or whatnot, and. They know you sensitive about something. Like, they see you being sensitive about it. Friends will just do that even more. Like, oh, well, they'll just poke even harder <laughs> because they know that it bothers you. I let mean, folks ain't yeah. being disrespectful. We know what disrespect is, but they just know we just, like, I'm just getting you that much, dog. Like, you can't get me back. The best advice I can give to anybody, because trust me, I, I ain't going to lie, man. Some some folks got me in the pants, bro, and I'm like, dang, they're getting me good. Mm-hmm. The one thing you don't want to do to, to get them off of you real quickly, Paul, is just don't just be like, ha, 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 yeah, yeah, man, you got me on that one. You got to hurt in here, man. You can't hurt. I'm saying you got to hurt in here. Like, yeah, all right, right, yeah, let me laugh it up so they can get off. Stop talking about me. It works. Trust me, it works a lot. But once you show that weakness, matter of fact, perfect example is uh, we all seen the Nutty Professor. And uh, really, both scenes of the comedy scene when uh, Dave Chappelle was coming at uh, Eddie Murphy when he was fat, and he was just like, "Oh no, I'm about to stay on you, boy." He like, "Yeah, okay, you can move on." And I'm like, move on. Like he like, no, I'm <laughs> like just laugh it off, bro. That, I'm telling you, just take the joke, they'll move on to somebody else. But once you start trying to uh, get sensitive and serious with them, oh boy. It's no turn on switch with them comedians, man. I'm not arguing with no comedian, bro. I know they would destroy me. <laughs> they gonna make me feel bad, and I would not sit front row at a comedy club. <laughs> yeah, you have to go ahead, motherfucker. No, man. So, uh, Shannon Sharp, man. I will say this: that uh, I don't know who his PR person is. I'm interested to see who his PR person is. And if the if his PR person is listening to this, tell him that he cannot win, right? Like this, you cannot win this, man. Like you, I, I don't know what you were trying to do. It, it's just a battle you cannot win because their platform is to make fun of life. Like every single time they get on the stage, they're talking about something or someone. It is not going to be, you're never going to get, I mean, well, you get social commentary from some comedians like a Dave Chappelle or somebody like that, but 
it's always going to be in the form of a joke. This is their job. And on top of that, Shannon has to realize, I think I said in the last episode, you invited all of this, man. You invited all of this. Listen, if you had a comedian on this podcast right now, this episode, in the fourth block, you had a comedian on there, a famous comedian, and he decided that he wanted to use this platform to go at every single comedian in the game. And it went viral, millions and millions of views. Guess what? B Sharp, you gonna be the subject of some jokes. Tez is gonna be the subject of some jokes. The Haven is gonna be the subject of some jokes. Sharpshooters podcast is gonna be the subject of some jokes because you just opened it up. Like he's he doesn't realize that he's collateral damage in this, right? He's an easy target because what he you could talk about Cat Williams, but what is he gonna do? You could talk about Monique, but what are they gonna do? They gonna get on stage and talk back. It's never gonna be as big as it is. But when you talk about Shannon Sharp and he reacts, oh man, it's it's open season. And now that they know that you're sensitive about it, they're just gonna keep going. They're gonna keep going because you're gonna react. It's gonna bring out another funny moment, and they just gonna talk about your reaction now. And this is going to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going until, I don't know, what are you going to fight a comedian? I don't, I, I just don't know what, what his, I, I don't know, man. And it's sad because Shannon Sharp is one of the people whose football opinion I respect. You know, sometimes he's a little bit, you know, biased. Outside of the Lamar well, the Jackson, most- yeah, but for the most part, yeah. <laughs> But 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 if you listen to him commentate on football, he usually calls it like it is. He'll call out your favorite player. Like even even Brisky saying to Lamar Jackson, one of the reasons that you feel that way is because Shannon Sharp called him out, right? Or, or whatever he thought was calling him out. So like for you to be that vocal about other players and be able to say what you want to say about other players, and some of it is based in truth, some of it is is just your opinion, but you know, with him, because he's a, a Hall of Famer, uh, one of the greatest, I think, second best tight end ever to play the game. Um, Man, that, that holds a lot of weight when you say that thing about those players. I know, I know. Um, I'm going I'm, to I'm stop you real quick. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Second best? I think it's a toss-up. I, think it's a to- I mean, not a toss-up. He holds the record. So, like, he's probably the best tight end to play the game. Who? Shay, you think he's as far dead. as receiving tight end? Yeah, as far as receiving think, tight end, I, I don't. I don't even think Shannon's in the top five. He, if he's in the top five, mm-hmm. he's at five. As far as the receiving tight end, or just overall tight end, we got Grump, we got Kelsey. He wasn't gonna block nothing now, but we well, got, got four in the He got three. Yeah, he got three. But, but I'm saying he ain't better than Tony Gonzalez. He ain't better than Grunt. He ain't better than Travis nah, Kelsey. He, you he, don't think he's a better receiving threat than than Grunt? Bro, Grunk is a mismatch. Grunk is, Grunk is, yeah, Grunk is a mismatch nightmare. But you look at Shannon Sharp. I, I think you should bro. go back and look at some Shannon Sharp highlights, man. Bro, you better what go he look did at- to linebackers. <laughs> Hey, what he did. Matter, 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 he was, I'm, I'm sorry for even cutting you off on that. That's one thing we'll talk about next week. We'll go ahead and get on that. That definitely gonna be the top five. No, no, no. That we ain't even make that a top. Well, we can, but then, nah. then he got like then he got like the record for most yards in a single game from a tight end, something like that. Yeah, but that I don't make him the greatest tight end. No, not that one thing, of course not. But like he Everything he changed the way tight ends. He changed the way tight ends were like seen in, in the NFL. I, 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 there's no Jimmy Grams if there's no Shannon Sharp. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I, there's I, I, no I, I, none blocking tight but, ends. But, but no right player. under him, that came right behind him is Tony Gonzalez. You give Tony Gonzalez, but Tony, John Tony, Tony Gonzalez is a complete tight end. So I would put Tony Gonzalez as one. Now that you mentioned it, I put Tony Gonzalez as one, but I think Shay is probably right behind him. I believe if Tony Gonzalez had one ring, it wouldn't even be no question. Because it's so like, bro. All the, the difference between these guys and Tony Gonzalez, all of them play with Hall of Fame quarterbacks. 
and probably some of the best quarterbacks ever played the game with Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes, and John Elway. The best one that I can think of that Tony Gonzalez played with is Trent Green and Matt Ryan. That's saying a whole lot about uh, Tony Gonzalez's career. But that explains why he doesn't have a Super Bowl. Bingo. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. If he got one, yeah. I, I'm easily, I can easily say that. But I just know uh, that's that that would definitely so, be. Go ahead. So so okay. So wherever you rank Shannon Sharp, he can be five. He can be one. He can be ten. He's a Hall of Fame tight end, and his oh, words yeah, when that. he's talking to players, it means something. So when you come down on these players, Red Day, you know they have every right to get in their feelings about it, man. So I, that's why I don't understand why he's just so upset about this considering some of the stuff he said about players in general yeah i think i think it's one of those type of situations where bro it would, would do shannon a whole lot better is if he didn't acknowledge it on his shows like just don't acknowledge what they're saying you know what I'm saying? but when you bring light to a situation you bring light to some certain things, man. It makes it makes that topic keep going. It makes it like you now you're just becoming a punching bag now, because because they see that it bothers you to a certain extent, and now people are gonna keep poking the bear. Like they're gonna keep poking the bear with like these these antics, like you know what I'm saying. Like I feel like you know he should bring it up, man. He should just whoever's like you said, whoever's on his PR team, let them know, man. You're not gonna <laughs> win, bro. You can't win this one, bro. Especially you're trying to go yeah. against comedians and call out comedians every week because you know you don't like what they stand about you or not, dude. That they are going to ruin you <laughs> on that. They're gonna turn you into a, yeah. uh, a comedy special if you keep trying to go jab jab with these guys. You know what I'm saying? You keep trying to spar with the comedians, especially the biggest ones in the game. Hey, man, just you know if you got an issue with it, man, DM them guys, man. Don't don't be. Don't talk about it on your show where you got all these followers looking at this stuff, man. All these subscribers watching this. It's just gonna keep becoming a thing, bro. Like, and I don't think he really wants that, man. I don't think it's gonna be good for him in the long run if he keeps trying to go jab and jab with comedians, bro. It's it's crazy. But, yeah, man. You, you, you so go ahead, go ahead. So the main thing, the the main thing though, is like he got he took offense to that, but really, bro, I thought like Mace was giving you some very sound advice, bro. Nobody's going to fight you. Like, I don't know if you think I don't know you talking you you talking tough to all these people and you got a permanent Batman suit on, <laughs> bro. Like nobody's about to fight you, bro. You need to be very cautious about like being around some of these people, man, and you talking tough and like you in the building and they see you and it's like, man, nobody going to fight you for real. It's like May said, try it if you want to. I see you doing your dips and your pull-ups. <laughs> Just try it. Like, Ray, it, it can get dangerous for Shannon because, uh, I mean, like when you when you in that physical shape, nobody's going to fight you. No, I, I wouldn't fight him. I don't know if you guys want to take y'all chances. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I know right. how to pick my battles, man. Yeah. And if I'm a fight, if I'm going to fight you, best believe it's gonna be some some brass knuckles on my uh uh hand. It's gonna be a bottle, it's gonna be something, it's gonna be some type of weapon in my hand. It ain't just gonna be a suck. Uh what they call it? Uh what is it? Uh I call you what they call that job back in the day. Uh, I can't even think about it right now. Uh, but I'm not about to fight this man straight up, man. I, I, <laughs> no. This man, this man that's smoking, my man smoking that good Reggie. If he think that's about to happen, but it ain't no way. Like, that's what Mike no, no, said. So I went to hug that I'm man. <laughs> this is Mike F said. I went to hug that man. <laughs> I was like, nah. He's <laughs> like, I got a gun. Nah. No. <laughs> I got my pistol on me, bro. Like, nah. <laughs> oh, bro. bro and nah. Man, I'm telling you, Mace was giving that man very good advice, bro. Like, man, you need to be careful because 
Nobody's gonna fight you, bro. I, I, hey, bro, I, I'm so glad that we, uh, oh, fisticuffs. That's what it said. Challenge you to fisticuffs. But, uh, yeah. man, the one thing that always been a fear of mine, I said, bro, if I'm getting into a fight with somebody, I'm so angry, dog, and I get this man the hardest punch to the face I can possibly deliver. And he just laughed. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm taking him. <laughs> I'm taking him. Bro, somebody just laughed. I gave him the strongest punch I could possibly deliver. And you just laugh. Boy, I, hey, hey, man, I'm sorry, but I'm running out. Of the Why next thing that's going to happen. There ain't no way, boy. You, you thought you saying boat was fast, boy. <laughs> I'm running, boy. But no, how is, he, advice, how is he gonna get out of this, man? Bro, the it's best thing he can do. <laughs> yes, like his sister told him, bro. Like, listen, like, bro. He was just talking about dimming his light or whatever. I was like, hey, man, she sounded like a good woman and all that. But listen to your sister, bro. Just stop. I just, I don't think, dude, clout chasing. I, I hate. I, that's the one thing I absolutely hate about this time. Bro. Comedians talk about what's popular. They're going to always right. do that. That's not clout chasing. Bro, they're not trying to... Now, it may be some trying to bring you down, like you may have a phase on love, them type guys, but these dudes are just talking, bro. These are legends. They don't need no clout. They set. They are good. I'm telling you, Eddie Griffin gonna sell out the show. Mike Gale's gonna still sell out the show. These guys still gonna sell out the show regardless of why these folks are funny. It ain't like they just some struggling comedians now. Right. I can like, see if they was talking about like another episode of his podcast, like that had that had nothing to do with the Cat Williams. Like, let's say the Cat Williams thing never happened, and then now all these comedians are coming at him. Like, man, yeah. okay, man, now maybe you got a point. <laughs> like, yeah. But I'm like, you man, invited like, it, bro. Yep, and thank you, Ted. That's exactly what I was just <laughs> about to say, bro. That is exactly what I was about to say. You said it best, bro. You invited this. Like, bro, you can't just have these conversations now I'll like bring up other people's names and then you fishing out other people's names. How you feel about this person? Some folks ain't going to take kind of that, man. You know, like, man, don't bring me up. Mm-hmm. Man, this can't. Cool. Why are you bringing up my name? Then that's starting a whole nother thing. So I just tell them to tread lightly on a lot of that stuff, man, because, <laughs> hey, these folks don't care. But hey, and ain't nobody finna fight you, bro. <laughs> and ain't nobody finna fight you, Shay Shay. And I hope you see this. Shout out to Pod, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, and I'm maybe even, and, and, and maybe, and maybe, uh, hey, bring a partner on the show, man. Partnership, some hey, hey. I talk good about you, dog, but I think you're being sensitive about this. You're too big to be that sensitive. And ain't nobody, right. once again, nobody's going to fight you. Nobody. <laughs> Unless it's, gonna be another, unless it's going to be another football player. That is it. <laughs> but much. speaking of football, NFL all-season predictions, we ain't going to have to spend too much time on this. It's really for y'all teams, <laughs> just to make it easy, what would you like to see your team do this all-season? And pretty much everything I wanted my team to do, they're doing the opposite of everything I want them to do right now. I'm like, I'm not liking it. Where I wanted Airbnb to me to be the head coach. And I was like, okay, they hired Dan Quinn. I was like, okay, at least keep Airbnb as the offensive coordinator. Oh, guess who we get? We get um, what's old boy named Cliff Kingsbury. I was like, bro, you gonna try to tell me Cliff Kingsbury is a better uh, offensive coordinator than um, Eric Bieniemy, who has two Super Bowl rings? Stop it! Get this man a quarterback, man. And now I feel like Cliff Kingsbury is about to benefit from having like a good quarterback. I want my team to get Jaden Daniels. I don't care about Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is cool. And I know he's from like the DC area, uh, the whole DMV. Shout out, shout out to the whole area. If you don't know what the DMV is, 
Jesus Christ. You you trust me, bro. It's a lot of folks that only when you hear DMV, they think of y'all already know. But it's not what y'all think it is, dummies. But uh he's from that area. But I'd rather have Jaden Daniels as our quarterback. We need to get some um uh, uh guys for the defense. We need like some cornerbacks. Something like that, man. We 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 need some of everything besides wide receiver, and we definitely need to fix up our uh O line. So guys, just tell me what y'all want real quick and we'll move on. Well, biggest thing I want to see my guys do is go get Saquon Barkley, man. I'm just mm-hmm. seeing that Saquon went and uh followed almost all the, the important Texan players. It's and uh Hall of, uh, future Hall of Famer JJ Watt, you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing that he's uh he's looking at Houston right now, man, which would be perfect for my boy CJ Stroud. Now, that's dope. But the biggest signing I would love to see happen in this offseason, we need to bring Mike Evans back home. We need to get Mike <laughs> Evans to Houston. Get him back home. Bring him back to Texas and let him play with CJ. The rest of his career, a great quarterback that's going to get him potentially, hopefully, another ring. That's what I want to see. That's on my wish list. Uh, then we need to get another linebacker, you know what I'm saying, in the mix. Uh, I like our secondary. I really like those guys we got. Ain't got nothing to say on that uh, forefront, but Let's get one more uh, O lineman. That's a linebacker. Let's get Saquon Barkley and let's go out there and get Mike Evans. That's my wish list. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my team, man. Honestly, uh, man, we are severely over the cap uh, right now. We're paying everybody, so it's gonna be tough. Uh, I would love to see the heir apparent to Trent Williams come in the building. Um, he's given us one more year. You got to think this is going to be his last one coming up. Um, so somebody to replace him would be nice. Um, looks um, like, looks like I, you. My fault. Trent, Trent on the, uh, for free agency or whatever. No, 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 no. I'm saying he, he announced he was coming back for one, for one more year. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So they thought he was going to retire this year, but he, you know, he decided he was going to come back. So I don't know how long he's going to be able to do it. So it would be a good time right. to go and get his replacement in there. You're right. Uh, My bad. Also, IU seems to be um, throwing hints that he wants to play somewhere else. Um, That would be a big blow to us. Uh, however, there's some receivers coming up, man. Mike Evans is one of them. I don't know if we can afford him. Uh, T. Higgins is another one. I don't know if we can afford him. Uh, Calvin Ridley's out there. I don't know. I don't know that we may be able to pull that one off. Uh, sign a Ridley, but I would love to see us have a true number one receiver because as much as people say that our offense is stacked, I don't think we necessarily have a true number one receiving threat. Um, Debo Samuel is more like a, you know, he's more. He makes his money on versatility. The fact that he can run the ball, he can line up anywhere. Um, I don't know if he's necessarily a number one receiving threat, meaning if you don't put other receivers around him, he's going to, you know, be able to win in one-on-ones. And Because uh, I think Ayuk is a much better route runner than he is. And even Ayuk, I don't know if he's just size-wise, I don't think he's a number one receiving threat. I would love to see us get um, – a bigger receiver. Um, and uh, I guess the only other thing, we got to solve the Steve Wilkes problem. He got fired. People saying he got scapegoated. Um, I mean, it's probably a little bit on it, of that, but um, I will say he did have a lot of trouble this year stopping the run. Um, he didn't have to a lot because we were usually winning games, but when it came down to it, when you saw – when teams were able to were in position to run the ball on us, they ran the ball pretty much at will. Um, and it's 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 telling because 
year prior to that, D'Amico, <laughs> you know, he's in there and nobody can run the ball on us. And it's pretty much the same personnel, you know. Uh, so I think that's one of the reasons he left. So we got to hire a defensive coordinator. Uh, now, I don't know who that is. I have no idea who that is uh, at this point. I haven't looked at the options. Um, I would say somebody, I don't know, you probably want to go with somebody proven. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I'm, I haven't given it much thought just because I know, like, the names that are out there. Like, who do you – this is going to be a Super Bowl contending team next year at the beginning of the season. Like, and who do you want to hire as a defensive coordinator uh, for this team so you can't take it? You know, a lot of chances. I actually like I like Chris Kiffin, to be honest, the Houston Texans linebackers coach, Lane Kiffin, little brother. But I don't know if he's ready for the big stage like that. I think he probably needs to go to college and coordinate there for a little while before he can uh, make a splash in the NFL. Uh, but yeah, give me a couple couple episodes, man, and I'll, and I'll have a list, maybe, or some idea of who we can put at defensive coordinator. Uh, but I guarantee you, whoever it is, they're going to have a history of stopping the run because that's what came to bite us this year. This is just we couldn't stop the run. If we didn't get up in games. Teams ran the ball. We couldn't stop it. Uh, but yeah, that's about it, man. That I could think of. Uh, it was set pretty much on defense. Of course, a lot of those players are leaving. I don't know if they're going to resign Chase Young. Um, so, of course, you know, you never can't have too many defensive linemen. So, uh, that's always there. Um, Hufunga is coming back in the safety spot. I know Gibson's probably leaving. So, I think we sat there. Yeah, I just think a coordinator, a replacement for Trent Williams, and a true number one receiving threat, I think, is uh, what we need to go after. What I would like to see. Cool, cool. Yeah, everybody got their wish, got their predictions slash wish list, what they want. But we already know it's the NFL. They're gonna let us down. That was can, it. Yo can team. we not? Can we not let the Chiefs get Patrick Mahomes? I mean, get uh Mike Evans because yeah. they on the short list for Mike Evans. And please let's let NFL do not let that happen. <laughs> Houston, yeah. Texas. Don't let that happen. <laughs> nah, Houston going to throw him that bag. He may he go back to Tampa, man. Just don't let his man end up in Kansas City. If he ends up in Kansas City, that's going to be ugly. I but couldn't that, even be mad at him. But the thing is about them, bro, it ain't like their offense. That was like, I still stand on it because it's, it's a proven fact that Airbnb enemy is the reason why that offense was so explosive a lot of the time. But Andy Reid is still a great play caller himself. So it ain't like Andy Reid, some scrub or whatnot, because Airbnb enemy learned under uh Airbnb enemy learned under Andy Reid. But the defense was yeah. top tier. <laughs> it ain't like they were some scrub. Now that that's the reason why they won the Super Bowl. They made it that far because if you look at every playoff game, the defense was the reason why a big part because the offense really the the Bills game, they held Josh Allen to in check. They played Miami, they held two in check. They played Baltimore, they held Lamar in check to a certain extent. I think they held him in check to a certain extent, only because a lot of the plays, some of these other guys dropping balls and fumbling and all that. So it could have been a little better, but they still held them in check. And then brought Purdy to a certain extent, too. I just The only thing I didn't like what the 49ers did in the Super Bowl, they just stopped running the ball at one point. Like, what are you doing? The one thing that I consistently seen that was happening to the Chiefs throughout the whole entire playoff, teams can run on them. Especially the Bills did exactly that. And I was like, oh, they see that. They just going to uh, run the ball, especially if you can run the ball. And then they'll just open up the passing game. But, hey, 
It is what it yeah, is, I man. Saw, I saw what Andy Reid did with a big receiver when he had T.O. <laughs> and uh, Donovan McNabb. They didn't win a Super Bowl, but, man, he put up some numbers. And, oh, and yeah. They were hard to stop with that receiving threat on the outside like that. And I don't want to see that uh, with, with Patrick Mahomes at all. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. And then you got Travis Kelsey. And Travis Kelsey is a safety blanket. That has shown exactly. in so many ways that it, that it has helped Pat. And that's why I've been saying this for the longest. I want to see Patrick Mahomes without Travis Kelsey. That would tell me a lot about uh, Pat Mahomes. I've seen him without Tyreek Hill, and I've seen how he can still, he can still be a great quarterback. But it's not so many explosive plays, only because you still got Travis Kelsey. Now, if you get rid of Travis Kelsey and you still doing what you're doing, hey, we may have a conversation one day in the GOAT conversation. But, yeah, but they're not going to get rid of Travis Kelsey. Kelsey no, but I'm saying Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is old. <laughs> he's getting older. He's, he's not getting any younger. Yeah. It ain't like he just – if you had if you got Travis Kelsey uh, in them early years with Alex Smith and all that, then we can really be like, oh, boy, this boy's going to be right. dangerous for a long time right now. But a lot of those guys, and then like Mike Evans ain't getting any younger yeah. or whatnot. So what we'll see, we'll see man. Saying, though, when, they get, when they get rid of Travis, they going to undoubtedly try to get another top receiving threat somewhere. So, when so they, your assessment of Patrick Mahomes is still going to be like, oh, now he's got this guy. It may not be Travis say, Kelsey, but he's always going to have yeah, of course, course, of course, because of who yeah. he is. But I'm just saying, these yeah. we talking about like all the time. Travis Kelsey, yeah. like when Brady had to is... go back and get Gronk, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I I literally seen what Brady can do without Gronk. I literally seen what he can do consistently without Gronk. Gronk definitely helped. Yeah, he was always hurt. <laughs> yeah, and he was always hurt in a lot of ways. But the crazy thing about that, bro, you look at Gronk stats compared to Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. And I think they play maybe the same amount of games. Maybe Gronk stats is like out, outrageously good. I was like, bro, this man could have stayed yeah. healthy in a lot of ways, bro. This is like the touchdown is just like ridiculous <laughs> in how many games and how many receptions he had. That and he has a lot of yards. He <laughs> Gronk, didn't was, Gronk was a monster, man. Gronk was like. Bro, the great the the end no the NFL is so lucky, especially in that Giants and uh Patriots Super Bowl the second time because Gronk wasn't healthy. If Tom Brady could have had Gronk and Aaron Hernandez together for years, ain't no telling how many Super Bowls they have in uh New England right now. For one, you already can't guard Gronk. Now you got to go out and do that's pretty much on, that can do the same thing as Grump, but he's a little more quick. It's faster. Yeah. And faster. Man, please. But this, this man, Brady, would have, ooh. I, 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 I just, the NFL teams are so lucky that Aaron Hernandez, uh, rest in peace, uh, ended up where he ended up at. But rest in peace, Aaron Hernandez. Uh, rest in peace to the victims and all that. We know that situation. We ain't going to speak on that. But we're going to talk about this one real quick. NCAA football 2025 is coming out. We're going to talk about this real quick before we get on the last topic. And we just, just everybody just name one thing that they want to see from this game the most. Now, for me personally, I want them to, well, outside of don't be, don't just take Madden and just put this in this game and make it NCAA. Don't do that. But Road to Glory, I want Road to Glory definitely because it's one of my favorite things because you just do whatever. I want to be able to play like every position. I don't care if it's offensive line or whatnot, which I'm not going to play. But I'm just saying, just do that 
NIL, transfer. You can just do a whole lot more. Just like how the games used to be, like attention to details. It's just the little things, the presentations, uh, the predictions to the game, like fan hype, all these little things. I mean, when they had homework in uh, one of the NCAAs, yeah. and like you had to keep your grades up or whatnot, or you couldn't play. Like it's just attention to detail, just little things like that will keep folks into it instead of just playing the game. They want to do like little stuff in uh that doesn't involve just playing the game. But that's just mine and franchise. Uh I really didn't like the recruiting uh, on 2014. The it was like it was like a little more weirder, like try to make it a little more simpler or whatnot. But like I said, pay attention. Close to detail with that too. Attention um, to detail with that. But y'all go ahead and give me what you got real quick. My number one thing I want to see in this upcoming game, I want them to incorporate the HBCU teams. If not, they better give us team builder. They better give us team builder. They better bring it back. I'm gonna be pretty hot about it because I like the fact that I can download different versions of the Tuskegee teams and, you know, different years or whatever. Like, if, if you have an active Xbox 360 working right now, like a lot of people don't, but if you're able to actually get – I think I think they just made the team build the servers. They brought them back. So, Ransky, you you should be able to download the, uh, the Tuskegee squads or whoever. But what I would like – what I used to do was – I would go make the old SIAC and, and I would actually uh, download other people's teams or whatever like that and correlate them into a season, into a dynasty mode. Now, uh, I know for, for a while they took that feature down, they took the website down, but then this year, they or within this past year, they brought it back. So I've been able to download my teams again. That's what makes me think they're going to bring Team Builder back. But I would love to see that incorporated in the game one way or another. Like, they just need to put all the conferences in the game, bro. Like, just do it, bro. We we on the Xbox Series X. We on PS5s. I mean, there's it's, it's no reason why uh, they can't do this, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at the MLB games. They got all the Negro leagues and everything. Like, you can put as many teams in there as you, as you want to now. These these video game systems aren't just dependent on the disc. We got downloadable content out of out of everything. So it's like there's no reason to exclude these these black conferences, man. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason, bro. So I would love to see that in the game. I'm tired of playing VCFX, which I'm currently playing right now. <laughs> yeah, my fault. I ain't even mean to cut you off. A lot of that could be licensing too. So we we can kind of give them a little pass on that. It all depend on licensing yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know how that. Like team At least give us. Oh yeah, brother. yeah. With team better. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I, I don't think I don't think they're gonna leave out that. Yeah. At the very least, or create a team or something, man. They gotta bring some team builder. Just at the very least, give us team builder. That's all I ask. No argument with it at all. Yeah, so, um, man, it's funny you brought up Team Builder. I didn't think about this until y'all y'all were just talking about Team Builder and Xbox 360. Um, I don't know, Brinsky, you can check. You, you say you have a working Xbox 360 right now? You got NCAA? You got it? I want you to check this out, man. You can let me know if it's if it's there online. I mean, offline. Once we get done with this or not. The last time I played this game, and it's just a crazy story. Uh, my partner Brandon Craig, DJ Parlay, rest in peace. He had several teams from our high school on the server, and they were still on there last time I played it. Now this might have been maybe five six years ago but i don't know if you can look up you know the servers there in the rosters and see if you can find a btw one uh he created like maybe four or five of them on there that's crazy and it's like a lot of the people that were on the teams when i graduated but i just thought about that when y'all mentioned team builder so that, that'd be cool to see man uh especially if we can make it over to the new one that would be amazing uh yeah 
with yeah. the, just a few of the features I would love to see from this game, man, is uh, don't option, don't like you said, don't pour it over Madden and just stick a new new teams on it and give us the same game. I, I want the same wide open NCAA game. I want the triple option. I want I want the playbooks. I want the college playbooks. Um, and also. I would love to see, I don't know, I didn't read on it much, but um, I would love to see the online seasons, um, online leagues. Uh, right now, I'm a big Madden online league guy. Uh, that's my favorite part of the game. Uh, yeah. Yo, mute. <laughs> what you got it on? What you mean what I got it on? Online Madden League because I'm one of those. Baseball. Baseball. You, you can, hey man, we cross play. Why would that cross play? Why that don't even matter? Hey, yeah, you man, play yeah, man. Yeah, man. You don't want to play. We'll 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 we'll, 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 we'll talk after this. We'll talk after this. Yeah, I'm a big Madden online league. online league, Madden Madden online league person, man. That's one of my favorite parts of the game. It's probably what I play the most. Actually, that's the only game I have right now that I play. <laughs> Uh, all so yeah, I would love to see that. It's just some other little things I would love to see them incorporated into NCAA because back in 2014, they didn't have all the defensive adjustments that you could do. Uh, like now, imagine you can adjust player by player, you can I mean, any defense you can dream up, you can you know make that adjustment on the fly before the snap. Um, so I'd love to see that in the NCAA game just simply because it wasn't – even Madden from 2014 wasn't that adjustable um, before the snap like that uh, with audibles and hot routes. And they had hot routes, but, like, it, you could do a lot more now than you could back then. So I would, I would love to see them incorporate that too. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That's about it. I just wanted to make a solid game, man, a solid college game. And like you said, not a port over for Madden just with – College teams logos. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, EA, don't mess it up. And you know, actually bring back like social media. Well, I know 2K do it. I didn't want to say that. Hey, man, just add the sharpshooters in there and just put <laughs> random stuff in there. I don't care, man. Just throw that in there. Just as an idea. But Last topic of the night, Monique and her son. And it's really not even talking about the situation. It's really just talking about a lot of uh, Gen, Gen X's and uh, the baby boomers. And what I've seen in a lot of uh, relationships with uh, these older parents and where in these generation uh, parents is that a lot of ways, a lot of them don't like to take accountability for like the damage they have done to their children. Now some of them, I ain't gonna lie, some of these kids are just ungrateful or and I ain't talking about those type type people or whatnot but some of these parents just like it's just some stuff man, just I ain't saying that you did a bad job. It's just certain things that I wish you didn't do, and it bothered me. But a lot of the time that they would be very, very dismissive about it. And I remember having this conversation with my mom about something. And thank God that she actually listened about something. I was like, I wasn't the perfect child. Not even by the stretch of imagination. And I can understand how the hell I word her to death in a lot of ways. But it was a particular situation. Uh, we was talking about something. And what surprised me, because I know how a lot of this generation don't like to hear that. Like, oh, I raise you the way I raise you and stuff like that, yada, yada, yada. Or whatnot. The one thing that I was surprised by that she actually listened. And then she was like, I didn't know that bothered you that way. And she apologized for it. They didn't even try to make an excuse about it. And thank God I have a, a good relationship with her. And most folks can't say that. 
even some folks have a problem with their dad and whatnot. And I know, uh, like some of my siblings, uh, had a problem with um, our dad. On, but for me, uh, I think with him and my mom being married the longest, and I had more time to spend with him inside the house, I got gained a lot of life lessons, and I had my trouble with him too as I got older. And when I it was just mainly in high school, but it really wasn't that big. But what I wish that uh, he had more time on is I had more time with him because I know like close when he passed, I think I was like 19 or 20. He was like, uh, he apologized for the stuff that he done. And that I could see that relationship changing. And I feel like a lot of that could have changed with like my brothers and sisters in a lot of ways. And like their relationship about him could have been different because the way I talk about him, <laughs> they don't talk about him like that. Some of them, but What's y'all thoughts on that type of situation? Or you can talk about this situation. I just that was mainly what I wanted to talk about this situation about. Yeah, I mean, uh the the nineties parents were different, dog. Like they, they were a lot different. Uh this is before the social media era. I mean, them cats was on Black Planet and all this. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it's just a whole different type of situation. My mom had me when she was actually 15 years old. So we're not that far apart in age like that, you know. Uh, a lot of stuff I had to talk to the game, bro. My mom was very young. Uh, she was, I don't. I, I hate to even put my mom out there like that. See, it's see your mom had you at fifteen. My mom had me at thirty nine. Sheesh. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. imagine, bro. By that first time, it, yeah, we close. We shut in the door. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm her firstborn. I'm her firstborn, and my dad is like, I'm my dad's knife. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And my little sister, the youngest, she had her at 44. Now, having a baby at 44 is even more crazy. Yeah, that's and crazy. My dad, yeah. And, my, and my dad is like nine years older than my mom. So he was, 30, he was 48 when he had me. And 53 when he had my sister. <laughs> That's great. No. Yeah. 53 when he had my sister. But my fault. Nah, man. Um, I just, you know, a lot of things that happened between me and my mom, man. Uh I had chalk it up with her with her age, man. Uh obviously my grandparents raised me for a good majority of my life, you know what I'm saying? And uh you know, I, I I had to I had to look past a lot of things with my mom. Not that I even growing up, some things I didn't even really really see or or understand at the time. I didn't know it was like I didn't really understand what was happening and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Until I got older, I could really just understand what was what. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know, the the type of mother that that she was to me was a different type of mother she was to my other siblings, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of growing pains there, a lot of things that, you know, could have been done a lot different. I don't hold nothing against her to this day. But uh, as far as with the Monique situation, bro, uh, her, son, her son expressed the fact that his mother chose to chase her career over being a parent, being a good mother to him. Sometimes these parents get things misconstrued. They feel like you got some parents who got a lot of money, man, and they feel like they can just toss money at their kids, not worry about them. Da, da, I got a family member like that. I will not on this podcast out there. I'm just saying I have some relatives that have gone through that where the mother made a lot of money but really did not pay that much attention to them you know what i'm saying she had all this bread and she felt like providing for her children was her being a good mother giving them the things that she felt was necessary for them to be happy instead of being an active parent you know what i'm saying those things can affect the kid in so many different ways man it's just it's it's hard to just to just think that you're just a good parent just because of what you can provide for your kid. 
sometimes it's not about that. Some some of these kids, it's not about the monetary things. It's not about the flashy stuff. It's about you actually being a parent. Um, even my wife, she, she deals with this. She wanted her mother to be there to talk to her more so than, uh, than just being a provider sometimes. She felt like you know her mama was on the phone a lot. You know what I'm saying? She gets on me about that. I'm on the phone all the damn time. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, if I'm not on the phone with one homie, I get off the phone with him. I'm on the phone with my cousin. I'm on the phone with this guy. I'm always on the phone. So, she, you know, she she has to, you know, she tells me about that. Like, hey, yo, check that. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, uh, she dealt with that growing up as far as, like, you know, wanting that active parent. Like, when she needed somebody there to ask the, the right questions and she needed that. That, that motherly figure to like, you know, answer the question she needed answered instead of just, you know, brushing her off because she's got this to do and that to do. So, you know, that's one thing that I'm trying to be better at in my parenting stances and, and things like that. I'm trying to do better with that for sure, for sure. But uh, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's what I got to say on that topic, dog. Right? <laughs> you know, I feel like uh, you know, I've been talking a little too long, but I got you, you know, Oh yeah, man. Hey, hey. Just before I uh, kick it off, the tip. I ain't gonna lie to you, dog. That was like just seeing Monique and her son reaction with one another, or whatnot, bro. It it made me just try to take mental notes. Just little stuff like that. I ain't gonna say I'm gonna be the perfect parent. I can take all the notes I want. Don't mean I'm gonna be the perfect parent, but. Especially with uh, Ted's giving me advice, like, man, just do the best you can. Just be the best version of yourself, man. And that's all I'm going to try to be uh, to my little girl. Because I know when I get older, I don't want to just be like, oh, man, she she just – I want to have an awesome relationship with my daughter. I didn't want to be like, man, we can talk and just laugh and joke about whatever. And I want her to just be able to say, I had an awesome childhood. It may not have been perfect, but I had an awesome childhood. But go ahead, Tim. Yeah. Um as as far as the Monique situation, uh, like I said off air, I hadn't really looked at this situation at all. I'm kinda like, I don't know, when I see Monique and some stuff, I kinda don't even pay it any attention anymore. Not that she's not wrong. I, I don't know whether she's wrong or right, but it's just like the boy who cried wolf is like after so many times of you complaining, I kind of tune it out. And I could be completely wrong in doing that. So I'm not sitting here saying that I'm right for doing that. Uh, but from what I hear, from what you guys are telling me, uh, like you said, she's saying that uh, because she provided financial uh, security for her son, um, that that gives her that qualifies her as a good parent or do you know doing the things that she needs to do uh to be a parent i kind of look at it i don't know man i have a, a mixed view on it kind of um i know like if for me i know that parents before that are older than me i'm i don't know what we say i'm a millennial is that what it is? Barely. Barely. <laughs> Barely millennial. Okay. It, but before me, man, a lot of the parents were doing when you I know I know when I would listen to them talk, they would often reference their parents and how they were brought up. And it and a lot of their ways and thinking were just based on how they kind of grew up. You know what I mean? And in different times, you know, that money went a long way uh, for black people back in the day. So when you hear stories about like older men or older women saying that they provided or like you hear them talk and they say, oh, well, my my dad provided for me, but he wasn't really around. But we made sure like this is more common than it is not it's like my dad wasn't around, but he provided for us and made sure we had a roof over our head. Um, and it's because they've, I think that they've been kind of taught that from a long lineage of just people doing the same thing. Um, I don't know when me personally, I grew up with my grandparents mostly, 
Um, and I think I think right around our generation after, I, I think it kind of changed a bit. That narrative was like, okay, I'm going to do the opposite of the negative things that I saw from you. Um, so, you know, my parents weren't as present as I was like as I would have liked. So I, you know, pretty much committed to being as present as possible with my daughter. Um, yeah, I mean, money, of course, is something that kids need, but time is 10 times more valuable uh, because you can't get it back, you know, and, and, I, and I really value my time. So like if I give you my time a day, then it goes for anybody. If I give you my time, like it must be meaningful. Cause I don't just hand out my time to everybody. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, is I, I just look at it that way. Um, and a lot of the parenting, um, that, like I said, a lot of the parenting practices that the older generations were accustomed to were, was just because that's how it always was done, how it always was done. And it sounds like, what the black community needed was just like a massive culture change in that um a lot like in sports when you have you know a team that's just been the laughing stock like for example the patriots were just the laughing stock of the nfl for so long right and then all of a sudden there was a culture change and once the culture change came in then you started to see championship dna develop so a lot of that is the same thing uh, with parenting. There's this philosopher I listen to named Alan Watts. He talks about this. Um, and I won't try to paraphrase him because I know I'm going to get it wrong. But I know one of the things that he says about parenting, he says that everybody kind of passes the blame. You will get one parent saying, oh, well, I did this because, you know, my mom did this when I was a child. Right. And then you ask that mom and she'll say, oh, well, I did this because my mom did this when I was a child. And it just keeps going over and over and over and over again. And one of the things he tries to hammer home, hammer home is like the importance of being present. And like you can stop that generational just long line of of, I, I guess, mediocrity. You can stop that today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now is the, the moment that happens. Um, so just even them having this conversation with her with her son is probably, even though I don't agree with having it in public like that, but at least they're having the dialogue to possibly make some changes. I don't know the dynamics of the relationship, but, uh, I think, I think that's the answer is just, you know, talking these things out and, uh, parents out there just like, Hey, listen to your kids, man. Listen to your kids. They tell you what they want. They tell you what they need in so many words. They may not know how to verbalize and say, hey, I don't, I don't really care about the Jordans. I want you to be at home. They may not say it like that, but they they, they usually act out in certain ways, man, or, or, or give certain little cues that like, hey, some of these things aren't important to me as your time or, you know, some of those things. It's just, it, it's, it's one of those things where you just got to be attentive, I think. And, um, this is a lot of parents. I see a lot of parents aren't like that, man. Because, I mean, it's hard. Like, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like parenting is an easy job. It's, it's, it's difficult because there is no, there's no rule book on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no handbook. It is not no one set way to do it. And then there's also this element of it that you don't know what's the best thing for a person right um you just don't what you think maybe you may be doing to help a kid may actually be hurting them in the long run you may give them everything in the world you may give them all the finances they may get all the new shoes all the new clothes but then 30 years from now 20 25 years from now they grow up and they don't know how to fend for themselves because you've always taken care of them you know what i'm saying i see that a lot and the parents that do it, they coming from a great place. Like they're, they're only doing what they think is the right thing to do. I'm gonna give my kid the world. You, you know, any of us would, would would agree with that. Hey, if I got it, I'm gonna give my kids the world. Um, 
but that's why you i think that's why you also see a lot of celebrity people on this whole thing of i want my kids to work for something you know what i'm saying a lot of celebrities some of them make it a point to like nah i want them to actually work for something like uh, Shaq. because like i said yeah like Shaq. yeah because because you just don't know you like i said you, you think you're doing the right thing sometimes but in the long run 20 years from now you may be hindering that that kid in some form or fashion so that's why i say it's a difficult job man yeah. and, and i think that yeah you just got to listen man <laughs> i guess and i think yeah, i'm glad you even brought up Shaq for like Shaq, for example i think Shaq is an awesome father and with him growing up and uh his uh stepdad which is he considered uh his father rest in peace sarge I wouldn't consider that like the way he was uh, raised. Now I, I think I take a lot from uh, his uh, dad and how my dad used to be with like my uh, older brother, older brothers and sisters. Like, hey, because he military man, but in a lot of ways, some of that parenting, like parenting, like. Some of that stuff upgrades, man. It just doesn't stay the same. Like, yeah, they taught us this way. But you know, like, nah, I ain't got to necessarily do all this to get this result or whatnot. Just because it worked for you, it may not work with this person. And that's and that, and that's the thing that I don't um, like in parenting in a lot of ways because a lot of folks just think just because it worked for them or whatnot. And another thing that I hate about uh, the older generation that they were like, oh, we were never this disrespectful and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, nah, I seen movies and I seen a lot of stuff or whatnot. And I like, we y'all kind of grew up in some eras like the crack era and all this stuff. I'm like, I know these kids be wild, but y'all wild too now. We ain't gonna do that like that. Freaknicks and all that. We ain't gonna act like that just ain't happened now. We we got video evidence on a lot of this stuff. So <laughs> man, it just I just feel like a lot of folks just gotta be if you just be hold yourself accountable uh on the things that you've done, it'll be a lot easier. Cause I'm telling you, bro, a simple I'm sorry can go a long way. Cause you ain't trying to force nothing. Or whatnot. I've seen a lot of problems happen when somebody just be like, oh man, you ain't know that and all that I did that. Once you're trying to uh back away from that kind of bit, that that resentment and all that um uh, bad behavior and whatever you want to call it, uh just make the situation worse. So I just say, man, just everybody try to hold themselves accountable as a parent, man. I I really want to have the most awesome relationship with my daughter, especially how I know growing up and I've seen how a lot of girls can go astray without having these type of relationships with their father. And I've seen a lot of them have awesome relationships with uh, their fathers. Uh, for example, uh, another one of your friends, uh, Derek, he met, married a Megan. Yeah. Dane and Marley, uh, rest in peace to uh, Mr. Powell. Um, how big uh influence he was on them being in their lives or whatnot. And, and you see the relationship that they had with their husband. Shout out to Derek, shout out to Gady. Uh, it just you just because they got that example from home, it's like he's a man's man, and you can't help but respect it, man. So at the end of the day, I just want to be uh, the best father I can be. And I know all of us, we literally all have daughters. So, and we, we just trying to be the best fathers that we can possibly be. So yeah, man, I, I just hope everybody can have a great relationship <laughs> with their uh, parent. I feel like this generation of uh, parents are uh, more involved, especially like the uh, brothers. Uh, black fathers are definitely involved. Whether I don't care what nobody say, the the uh, research tells it all that we are the most uh, active fathers of any group. 
of any group. So I'm definitely proud about that because, you know, like, oh, black men don't take care of their kids and all that. We're killing that. So, and I and we don't respect. And I know uh, all three of us don't respect nobody who doesn't take care of their children. So, yeah, man. As always, man, great show. And we're about close to that two-hour mark. So, you already know the routine. Go around the table. Everybody shout out. Um, they Instagram, Twitter, or whatever. What to look out for and all that good stuff. Start with you, uh, Ted. Yeah. Ted, you see it again. There it is. I don't know. It's kind of reverse. Proto image on all social media platforms. Uh, and just look out for me. You know? <laughs> They're going to see you on here more. So. Yeah. What did Dia say? I'm coming. Yeah, pause. <laughs> pause. Yeah. <laughs> what you got? In the million, man? Yeah, so I got to pause it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, game attack. DJ Ghost played on Instagram. DJ Ghost played on all that. You know, make sure y'all follow me. Everything like that. Your boy be on the game. Your boy be on on the social medias. All that stuff, man. Look me up on Facebook, The Haven More. You know what I'm saying? I'll be on, on Facebook going crazy all week, man. So, yeah, Mr. Hot Take Drake, you already know what's up, man. I'll let you. Hey, man, you fine for uh, throwing out the game and so I feel like I got to step my game up. But, hey, uh, I'm Brissy Shaw for the Shaw Shooters Podcast, man. As always, we drop every Wednesday. Um, Appreciate everybody uh, for the support. Uh, Sub still going up. The engagement going up. Uh, Going to bring... I know I've been saying it, and I know a lot of folks have been on my head about it, about the uh, live stream. Live stream is definitely coming coming sooner than later. I say less than a month. I'm going to have to test it out one time just to see what I know what I'm doing to make sure I'm doing it right. But uh, y'all make sure y'all look out for that. Uh, follow me, uh, B Sharp on Twitter, B Sharp Five on uh, Instagram. It could be B Sharp, but somebody won't let me have it. <laughs> <laughs> and B Sharp, uh, well, you see B underscore Sharp. That's how it be on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Add the five, but on Xbox, it's just B Sharp. So definitely hit me up on that. And as always, appreciate everybody. Shout out to Arlon and Quinn. They couldn't make it uh, this week. Hopefully we'll have them on next week because I really wanted them to be on this discussion uh, tonight. Thank you to uh, all the support. Uh, my number one supporter, my wife, my baby Justice. Uh, just turned uh, 11 months last week. Now we're getting prepared for the Big one, the big one. So, yeah, shout out to her on that. Thank you to everybody. And as always, roll tide.